Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Lütolf and I will talk about post-processing in 3D printing production. As a 3D art producer, I get in contact with a huge variety of 3D prints. For example, we have on the left side a human size SLA print from Alex Hanima. In the middle, a huge sneaker on a concrete wall by Isabel Krieg. And on the right side, it's the Infidential Space by Christian Keretz at the Biennale. It's a huge 3D print that builds a hollow room. All these 3D objects are based on the four crucial steps in the 3D production line. In the first step, we create the 3D model by downloading the model, reverse engineering the model through a 3D scan, or building the model with the 3D software. In the next step, we bring the 3D model to a slicing software and we translate the STL, OBJ or PLY file to a tool pass as called the G-code. The third step in the production line is the actual 3D printing. We can choose between a various variety of 3D printers as FDM, SLA, SLS or MJF. As the print is finished, we go over to the fourth step. It's like the 3D print process processing, where we work with our printed object. Today I will talk about the 3D printing post processing, the last part in the 3D printing processing line. Especially for uh, bigger parts, the whole production is still uh, made by 3D factories because these printers are really expensive and you need a lot of experience to maintenance them. Uh, so in the production line, only the step for creating the model stay with the artist and the rest will be done in the factory. These 3D factories are mostly producing technical parts and are not used to art pieces and their special treated surfaces. Because of that fact, a lot of errors can happen in the factory and big surprises can arrive in the box. As an example, we received like this huge box with a $20,000 project in it. As we opened the box, the sculpture looked fine and we were really happy with the result. Here we can see the whole SLA print. It's a girl with a cell phone in her hand, made by Alex Honeyman, with a white UV coating on it. After a closer look at the whole sculpture, we found some huge step where the legs are glued together, and also some missing structure of the pan pattern. Production error like this cost a lot of money and we had to reproduce the whole sculpture again and make sure that all the seams are well treated and we have no showing seams or steps in the sculpture. Post-processing can be really difficult and time consuming. I experienced that during my time at the ETH Zurich at the Professor Chair of Karin Sander. There we also made models for other professors' chair. As an example, we can see here on the right side a model for the professor chair of chemistry. This model was really fragile, heavy, and we had to hold the model for more than an hour in our hand to put the epoxy for curing the surface. This model is a good example for errors or failure in uh, post-production. After three weeks, uh, the professor's chair of chemistry found out that we actually missed a part in the printer and it got probably vacuumed away uh, during post-production. Just to give you an example how long post-processing takes, uh, this project also at the ETH Zurich, a copy of a stone 
uh, we see on the right side the original one is on top and the copied stone is on the bottom of the picture. So from the left picture where the stone came out of the printer to the finished uh, print, like the treated with epoxy model, um, it took about 18 hours, sometimes also with two person because it was like a, a heavy print and you have to handle it um, really carefully because it's just a, a shell. These are good examples also from the ETH uh, where like we printed some parts with uh, another company and uh, both pictures show parts uh, they start fading faster than the part we printed on the same time. So to the left, um, on the left picture, the left sculpture is the one that faded faster. And on the right picture, the one in the middle was done by us. And the uh, two on the outside were done by the company and they faded also faster. Because the post-processing process is a crucial step in the whole production line of 3D prints. A lot of artists decide to do the post-processing by their own, so they don't lose control over their project. So let's have a look at the 3D print post-processing, the fourth step of the 3D printing production line. In post-processing, we have three different groups of post-processing. We have the subtractive post-processing, the additive post-processing and the thermal and chemical treatment. Here we have a summary of all the post-processing we can do to a 3D print. In the subtractive area we have sand and polishing, tumbling as a way of sanding, sandblasting, CNC machining and chemical dipping. At the additive side we can fill, prime, brush coat, spray coat, following dip coat and powder coat apart. At the last one, it's thermal and chemical treatment. We can do local melting, annealing and vapor smoothing. Because there are so many 3D print materials on the market, we just go through a few of them. It comes handy that we work with the parts that are sent to us. So uh, on the left side, we start with the T and the connector. That's a FDM print, a fused deposing modeling. And then the V is a SLA print, stereolithography. And the F, it's an SLS print, selective laser sintering. And the I, it's a multi jet fusion print. So going to the post processing of these four different materials. Uh, I will do like two groups. The first group is the FDM and the SLA. They're more plasticky and they also need support for the printing. The second group is the SLS and the MJF print. Both prints are based on powder, so they fit together in a group. As you can see here, uh, the FDM and the SLA print, they both need uh, support during their printing and the SLS and the MGF, they don't need uh, specially support. Sometimes when the print are really small or like frigid, uh, you build the support, but they're not really needed because the powder. Just to give you a summary of the different printing techniques, the FDM is the one that the, like a uh, hot plastic comes out of uh, extruder head and SLA is like um, a resin bat that uh, uh, different parts get cured by a laser or by light source. The SLS is a powder bat that the laser is uh, fusing like powder together and the MGF is also a powder bed where a, a light source and some activator are curing powder together. Let's start with the first group, the FDM and the SLA group. Um, at first, when the print comes out of the printer, we have to break away the support structure. Um, on the left side, we see the support structure is quite rigid, 
and uh, you have to break away the structure with the plier and other tools. There's also another solution. It's a soluble uh, release support. Uh, this support can be washed away with warm water. So you dip the model in warm water and um, the support uh, disappears. To get rid of all the leftovers from the support, you start sanding the surface of the 3D print. You can do that by a sanding block or a sandpaper uh, with a fine grain. Uh, you can go from like a, a little bit bigger grain to a really fine grain. Um, also, what you do in post-processing is uh, gluing the, the parts together or a cold welding them with the acetone and um, there you can decide if you do like part by part in the sanding and then glue them together or you glue everything together first if it works for your model and the model is not too complex and uh, then you send the model um, down. After first sanding you can put the filler on gaps and cracks and also imperfection in the print and sand them again to get a smooth surface. Another way to get a total shiny surface is uh, polishing the 3D print. Uh, first you start with the sandpaper again and then you can go over to a polishing machine and to um, polish the part with the um, polishing paste and the machine. A not so common uh, thing to do is annealing the 3D parts that works only with the FDM. Um, so you heat up the parts and the monocolor structure of the 3D print changes and hardens the part. Uh, what happened with the annealing is the part changed his original form. So you have to be sure that uh, you don't need the part in the original shape. And other thing that's happened a lot by uh, huge parts for car or um, industrial parts is following uh, the parts with different color um, uh, films. So you have a really nice smooth surface on the end. If you're done with sanding and uh, putting filler on your part, you're able to put primer on, on your 3D piece and start painting. That works with all kinds of color. A uh, really good site to check out is justpaint.org. Uh, there they did a lot of tests with different materials. You can see them on the right side with PLA, PTG, um, PA12, ABS, uh, all kind of stuff. So um, to get a good overview about uh, paint and 3D um, material, you can check out justpaint.org. An other way to paint your part is dipping. The really downside is that you um, get rid of a lot of details because the the paint feels the, the little details. Now we come over to the second group, the SLS, the MGF uh, group. It's like the powdery group, as I call it. Uh, first step is like get rid of all the powder um, on your part. So you use a little brush or air to get the, the powder away. After that, you put the part in a tumbler with like special beans in it and or you sandblast the part. Here another example from a SLS print. Uh, we had like here the, the problem that the 3D factory uh, was printing this little figurine like this Barbie and on the back of the Barbie was like this, this imprint. And when we received the puppet, there was like no imprint shown anymore. It was just like a little bit there. 
and so uh, it was not usable so we decide to do in this 3d file a box where we put the print into the box so uh, actually we just ordered like a, a box with uh, the 3d print in it so that way we could protect like the print from the factory and uh, on the end we got the box to the studio and we opened the box in our studio so we are sure that the imprint was still intact when we received it another way to treat your sls or mgf models is by dyeing uh, you can see on the left side you can mix colors and you have a huge variety of colors for this process the common way to treat your model is by spray paint or lacquering so first you do like a prime coat on your model and then you can uh, treat it with all kind of colors um, a special way to treat your model is by metal coating or electroplating that works for sls and also for um, FDM and uh, SLA prints. The MGF is not the best to do uh, metal coating and electroplating. So at the end uh, of my talk I want to do a quick summary of these four printing methods that we separate in two groups. On the left side we have the FDM and the SLA print. So there we first remove all support structure and clean the surface. Then we start grinding with fine sandpaper. Uh, we can also polish the surface. We do uh, glue the parts together and then start uh, painting or coating the parts. On the right side, we have the SLS and the MGF. Uh, first, we remove all loose powder, um, start smoothing and cleaning the parts, and we sand them. And then we glue also the parts together and uh, start with uh, coating um, the different parts. Uh, at the end, I want to talk about a really important thing that's a lot got forgotten. It's the packaging. The packaging is for me really important because I experience a lot of damaged 3D prints uh, during my time working with uh, this um, topic. So uh, make sure that your uh, packaging is all well, well constructed or well done uh, so you don't receive or like on the other side of the shipping line uh, they don't receive broken 3D prints. As an example here uh, to the left you can see uh, some sculpture of Alberto Giacometti. They're really small ones but even then we uh, milled out the volume of the sculptures uh, out of foam. In this way I want to thank you for listening and happy 3D printing. If you have any question reach out to me and enjoy the rest of the Tech Focus conference. Thank you.